What's going on YouTube? Now more than ever, it's really important to protect our online data. When you connect to open wireless networks, or even when you connect to a known network that's not your own, you actually don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You actually don't know who's monitoring your traffic. And you also might want to relocate yourself if you're working remotely in a place you're not supposed to be. Having a travel router is the best way to mask your location. It's also a great way just to ensure that all of your data remains your own private information. This will block ads as well, so get rid of all of those ads online thanks to AdGuard Home. And the number one thing that I like about these travel routers is they're super small, fit in the palm of your hand, and they're probably more powerful than your existing home router at the moment. Let's go ahead, take a look at Barrel AX together and see what it's all about. Now if we take a look at the size of Barrel, again, it's a very small and portable travel router, and that's what I really like about these devices. They can travel with you wherever you go, but now they've become so powerful and fast that they can even be your stationary router in your small home or office. So again, this is a multifaceted device. It's not just for travel anymore. Check my link down below if you're interested in picking this up. They're running, they're running a sale on them right now, so check that link down below. But again, this is going to be a very, very fast travel buddy. And taking a look at the back here, you have that all-important 2.5G port. Now that's something that the Slate AX does not have, but Slate does give you that extra LAN port on the back here. And there's another LAN port, so you get two LAN ports, one USB 3 port for connecting any type of cellular modem or USB drive if you want to do that. And then you do get support for WireGuard or OpenVPN, which I suggest most of you should use this on WireGuard if you want the fastest speeds possible. If you don't yet have a service that connects to WireGuard, check my link down below for, well, TorGuard. Save yourself 50% off for life at using code JabberTech again. You're going to be able to protect yourself and, and get around some geo restrictions and whatnot for less than a cup of coffee. I think that's win-win in my book, so check my link down below. But coming back to Barrel, you do have a toggle switch on the side that can easily turn off AdGuard Home for blocking those annoying online ads, turn on or off your VPN service, and then do a whole bunch more which we'll get into. Here's your power and reset button right on the side there. And on the front, you have a little LED light, which thankfully GLINet has really toned down that LED light. On some of their other iterations, it was just a little bit too bright for my liking. But as of right now, they've toned it down and there's even a setting to turn it off as well. Now you might be saying, hey Jabra, what would I use one of these travel routers for? And there's a lot, a lot of reasons. Let me know down in the comments below what reason you're using it for. But the number one reason is to protect your online data, to protect your online information. When you connect to a wireless network like Starbucks or a hotel Wi-Fi, you just don't know who's monitoring it. Plus the fact that those public networks always block certain things. Some of them block Netflix, some of them block streaming information, some of them block certain websites. So connecting to your VPN server and using Barrel, you're going to get around all of those geo restrictions. And that's just a win-win in my book. And that's actually what I picked up the, the travel router for in the beginning. It was just when I was traveling abroad, I actually wanted to connect to US sites that were blocked in the country I was in. So having one of these travel routers is the way to do it. Another thing that you can do with Barrel once again is you can just use it as your own personal wireless network or wired network when you're in your small home or office. Now again, I say small home because this is not going to be powerful enough if you live in that three-story mansion. For that, you're going to have to get a more powerful gaming router. But if you have a small office or a studio or maybe a one-bedroom apartment here in New York City, that's kind of like a studio. This is going to be perfect for you guys. And if you have roommates as well and you don't want them checking out your information or whatnot, this is a great way to do it as well. Again, it's all about creating your own network within a network, if you will. Speaking of speeds and range, I've used it up to about 25, 30 feet away and still got a decent connection. Again, it's a small travel router. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. If you live in that mansion, this is not going to power up your whole house. It's intended to be somewhat in close range, close proximity to yourself. So that's just what I would recommend, guys. Use this if you're about 30 feet away. Again, perfect for that small office or small apartment here in New York City. I think it's just a great device overall. Another way that you can use one of these travel routers is, is either an extender or repeater mode. So if you just want to repeat your own home network, again, maybe, maybe your existing wireless network just doesn't reach far enough. Well, using Barrel is a way that you can extend your own, your own network. And you can also give wired access via a wireless connection to certain devices like printers or whatnot. And you can do the opposite. So if you connect an ethernet cable, you can give wireless connection to wireless devices. Now, of course, if you repeat a network wirelessly, you can still transmit your own wireless network. I know that's a lot of wireless and wired talk, guys, but just know you can connect a wire and make it wireless and you can make more devices wireless with wireless power. So again, extender, repeater, or router mode is possible on Barrel. And that's just some of the reasons that I think you'd want to pick up this device. And also, it really is super fast now. They've really come a long way when it comes to speed. 
So with WireGuard, you'll get a maximum of 300 megabits down. With OpenVPN, you'll get a maximum of 150 megabits down. Now that might be a little bit slower than, than Slate here, which can do a maximum of 550 megabits. So depending on your speed requirements and depending on your actual VPN company speeds, you might want to pick up Slate. I'll leave my review to Slate down in the comments below. But no matter which one you choose, I think you're going to be very, very happy with. So let's check out some of the settings of Barrel together and I'll show you how to set it up. Logging into the admin control panel of Beryl, this is your snapshot of how you're getting internet access. So right now I am connected via Ethernet cable, and I'm providing internet access that way. I can see how many wireless LAN clients I have connected, as well as how many LAN clients are connected as well. Underneath here, you get a snapshot of what you have enabled. So I do have AdGuard Home enabled, which means I'm blocking all of those annoying ads and malware attacks. I also don't have IP version 6 enabled, but you can have that enabled and that will light up if you do. My VPN is connected as well, so there's my VPN shield of, of protection. And for those of you that like Tor, this is a Tor supported router as well. Underneath, you can see all of your four different SSIDs that you can create. So you have a 2.4 as well as a 2.4 guest. You also have a 5 gigahertz as well as a 5 gigahertz guest as well. And the great thing about a guest network is you're blocking all access to your main network. So that's perfect for sharing the internet with people you might not know. Perfect for sharing the internet with maybe some co-workers when you're in that WeWork situation. Again, there's a lot you can do with Beryl. Coming back to the internet options for Beryl, you can use this in repeater mode, which I suggest most people are going to do. So if you're at that hotel, motel, holiday inn, and you want to connect to that wireless network, this is how you're going to do it. You can also use it for Starbucks. You can also use it for a connected wireless network that you already know the password to. Again, you're making your own secured wireless network from a, well, maybe unsecured network or a monitored network. So making your internet traffic private, and that's what it's all about. So scrolling down here, you'll see an option for repeater mode. All you have to do is click on connect, and it's going to search for all of the wireless networks around you. And all you have to do is search for the wireless network that you want to connect to. Once you click on it, you'll have to enter in the password if it is a password secured wireless network. Once you enter in the password, click on apply and Barrel is going to connect to it that way. Again, if it's an open network, you just have to connect to it and then Barrel is going to do the rest. So I've already connected to my wireless network right here. Here's good old Spectrum. So now I have access to the internet via two different sources. So again, I do have that Ethernet cable connected as well as a wireless network that I'm connected to. And the great thing about this new firmware, and this is something that wasn't in my Slate review, so I'm going to go over it now. All of these other settings I've gone over in that Slate review, so go ahead and check it out there. But it's the multi-WAN feature. So again, if you have two different or three different or even four different ways that you're getting internet to barrel, you can go ahead and first of all, set the priority of each of these, each of these different methods. And you can use them sort of, sort of like a failover. So if one internet connection goes down, it's going to revert to the other one on the list. Therefore, making this a, a multifaceted WAN type of device. But I personally like the load balance because if you're getting two different internet connections, not the same internet connection because that's not going to increase your speed. But if you have a gigabit connection over Ethernet and maybe you have a slower wireless network that you're, that you're getting from the hotel or maybe you're getting from your neighbors, you can go ahead and connect to both of these, both of these services. And then you can do the load balance feature, which is going to combine forces and give you an even faster connection. So that's a brand new feature that I like on the latest firmware. Lastly, when it comes to connection, you can go ahead and tether a device and get internet that way. Or if you plug in a USB cellular modem to the back, you can go ahead and share internet traffic that way. So again, with that multi-WAN function, if you have a ethernet connection at home, and maybe you also have a cellular USB connection that you use when you're traveling, you might as well connect the two and combine forces and get an even faster connection. Now, speaking of faster connections, let's do a baseline speed test because then I'm going to then I'm going to show you how you can get the fastest speeds possible for WireGuard or OpenVPN. So right now, if we go back to my dashboard, you can see, in fact, the VPN shield of protection is down. I'm not being protected at the moment, but that's OK, because I just want to do a speed test anyway. So doing a baseline speed test, let's go ahead and see what kind of speeds we're going to get. So there we are. My baseline speed test is 360 megabits down. Taking a look at our baseline speed test, 350 down and about 78 up. Now let's go back and connect to, to an OpenVPN service. Now what I like about TorGuard once again, number one, I think they have some of the fastest WireGuard speeds that I've ever tested, and I always recommend that you guys use WireGuard. But TorGuard gives you the option, unlike a lot of VPN companies out there, some don't even give you the WireGuard option when it comes to connecting a router. 
So I definitely like the fact that with TorGuard you get both options, you get open VPN as well as WireGuard service. But I also like the fact that if you use code JabberTech, you're going to save 50% off for life. So it brings the price down to about $5 a month. And that's less than a cup of coffee here in New York City at Starbucks each morning. So again, I like my code because I'm saving you guys a little bit of coin. And that's what I like to do. But not only that, guys, what I like about TorGuard is they have this really cool configuration tool. And with the configuration tool, it's very simple to get any config file that you need. So I think they do a really great job of, of giving people a very usable service and also a quick way to get any configuration file. Once again, here are your two options for OpenVPN and WireGuard, making it very, very simple to connect to whatever server you want. Now, if you wanted your own fixed IP address, like what I have with TorGuard, you can get your own fixed IP, which is going to be perfect for streaming applications. You know, a lot of times Netflix is blocking you when you use a VPN. So using one of the fixed IP options from TorGuard is going to get around that. But for the moment, I want to show you what happens when we connect to just a regular server in terms of speed and whatnot. So let's go ahead and choose... I don't know, let's go ahead and choose New Jersey. Click on Generate Config, and that's basically it. Once again, that's why I really like TorGuard. It takes the guesswork out of connecting to servers. It just makes it really, really easy. You can do the same when it comes to WireGuard in terms of this generation configuration tool. So you have all of your different options as well as those fixed IPs if that's how you want to connect. But let's see right now, I think I'd rather be in Miami. I'd rather be sipping some, something on, on South Beach than chilling here in New York City. So all you have to do now is enter in your username and then click on generate config. Once again, everything is downloaded for you very, very easily. So that's why I recommend TorGuard. Now going back to our dashboard with OpenVPN and WireGuard clients, click on OpenVPN and I do have a couple that I've already uploaded. If you'd rather a built-in service like NordVPN, I do have a coupon for you guys down below. And all you have to do is enter your username and password and it's going to connect to you right away. But most of us, I suspect, have our own VPN service, or maybe even we have, we have one that we're hosting. Click on New Group. I'm going to call this one New Jersey. And then click Select the File. Download the file that we just downloaded, which was 47. Click on Open. Again, enter your username and password, and that's basically it. And the same goes for WireGuard. If you want to use your own services, I'll show you how to do it. But you can go ahead and use one of these pre-installed WireGuard services as well. Check my link down below for the latest pricing. But I'm going to click on New Group, and I'm going to call this one Miami. Click on Select File. Click on the file that we just downloaded. Click on Apply. And that is it once again. Very, very simple. So now coming back to our VPN dashboard, you have, you have a couple options here. So you have OpenVPN and WireGuard clients. And you can also host your own server for either one of those protocols if you want to. So it's very simple, guys. So let's click on Setup Now. Generate configuration file. Barrel is going to give you that same config file that we downloaded from TorGuard, but for your own device. And you can share that with anyone that you want. So if you want other people to be able to connect to your own network, you can give them the configuration file that they're going to need. But clicking on the OpenVPN config file that I just imported, we should be in New Jersey in just a little bit. Now we're connected to US New Jersey via TorGuard. Let's go back and do a speed test once again. This is my baseline speed test of 350. So let's see what kind of speeds we're get, gonna get with OpenVPN. Now the max is gonna be 150 megabits down. And usually I've never seen, I've never seen speeds higher than about 100, maybe 120 using OpenVPN. With WireGuard, we're gonna see much faster speeds. So that's why I always recommend WireGuard over OpenVPN. So I only got about 50, but my upload is, is hovering about the 80th type of range. So we can see here, it's probably going to stop on 83 and 50. Let's just do a refresh and make sure that wasn't a fluke. So there we go. We're still around that, we're still around that 50 range. And if you see my IP address, I am in New Jersey. You can see that down here, Woodside, USA. Now we've connected to WireGuards. Let's do a speed test in Miami. I'm chilling on South Beach right now. So let's go ahead and see what type of speeds we're going to get there. Now that we've connected to the Miami server, we're chilling on South Beach and we want to upload some files. We want to watch some Netflix. This is the speed that I'm getting from the Miami server using WireGuard. So 200 megabits down and about 68 up. 
Let's go on ahead and run a secondary test just to kind of see what speeds we're going to get. Now, once again, the max is 300 megabits down on barrel. Now, again, I suspect most companies aren't going to be able to push out that type of speed, but it's very nice to see we're still getting around the 200 megabit range. That's still very fast. That's still going to be able to serve multiple clients connected to barrel. So that's why I always recommend WireGuard. It's just a faster service than OpenVPN. Taking a look at AdGuard Home, I've, I've only been connected for about an hour or so, and you can see how many, how many times I've had to block something. I feel like a ninja. I'm just blocking left and right. I've blocked about 30% of my traffic coming in, and that's just all by ads. And you can see down here the top, top culprits of the ad blockage, and you can also see the top domains as well. So again, I just like the fact that I'm able to block ads. There's nothing against ads except when it becomes overwhelming. Not to mention, it's also going to speed up your internet browsing because when you're blocking those ads, you're not taking processing power to display those ads. You're not taking up bandwidth to display those ads as well. So if you're on a metered connection, if you don't have unlimited internet, blocking ads is actually going to let you surf the web a little bit more. Now just take a look at speedtest.net and you can see that usually there's a whole bunch of ads around here flashing and blinking and doing all kinds of things. Now you can see they're gone thanks to AdGuard Home. So you might as well do one more speed test just for fun. But I like the fact that I can surf the web and, and not have any ads in my face. I just think it's a great option. I've gone over the rest of these settings in full detail with my Slate review, and it's exactly the same. So if you're interested in checking out all of these settings that are available, I'm going to link to my Slate review down in the comments below, as well as a card that's going to pop up. But I just want to show you two more, two more settings that I think are pretty, pretty useful when it comes to Barrel itself. Now, once again, here's that toggle switch that we showed in the beginning of this video. So you can use this to turn on or off certain functions like AdGuard Home, OpenVPN Client, Tor, or as well as your WireGuard Client as well. I usually like leaving it for my VPN service because sometimes you don't necessarily want to connect to your VPN service. So I like the fact that we have different, different options when it comes to this toggle switch on the side of Barrel. Another thing that I like about it is now we have an overview section. And this is something that I like because you can see exactly what's going on. You can see your CPU average load. And we also do have that built-in fan for barrel, so it's going to keep this device running cool no matter how hard you're pushing it. So I definitely like that, and I also like the fact that we can change the threshold. So depending on if you're in a hotter or colder environment, you can go ahead and change the threshold for when that fan is going to turn on. And when it is on, which quite honestly, I've never had to really turn on this fan. Everything stayed really, really cool. But you see how many rotations, how many RPMs is going on. So again, a lot of information for us nerds. And especially your memory usage, you can see how much memory usage is going on, as well as how much storage. And for that LED on the front, you can either turn it on or turn it off if you guys want to. And then you see your uptime as well. So again, I, I like the fact that we get a lot of information now when it comes to the new firmware. And I think GLINet is on the right track. I think they do an excellent job with their travel routers. If you have any external drive connected to that USB port on the back, you have your option right here to see any information about the usable storage and whatnot. So again, this overview page is probably the page that you're going to want to come to most if you're like me and you just want to know what's going on with your device. One more feature that I want to go over is called Mac Clone because honestly, I've used this one time and I'm very happy that I had it for that one time. True story, I was in Aruba and I was in a hotel and they were actually being really stingy with their wireless network because of course they had an option for a premium wireless network if I wanted to pay extra every night. I'm JabberTech, I'm not about to pay for wireless networks. I know I can get around certain restrictions and whatnot. So with Mac Clone, all I had to do was give them one MAC address, say for my tablet, and then just clone that MAC address into Barrel. Using Barrel to connect to the hotel's Wi-Fi, I could then fool that hotel network into thinking I only had one device in my room, when quite honestly, I had about 10 devices connected. So with Mac Clone, I think it's a great way to mask how many clients you actually have connected to that host network. Again, you might never use this feature, but when you do, you're going to be glad that it's here. That's just my personal opinion. I always like Mac cloning. I always like cloning in general. If I could clone myself, I probably would. And that's it. Let's head back to the office and give you my final thoughts on Barrel. This has been a look at the brand new GLINet Barrel AX3000 Wi-Fi 6 travel router. And if you're looking for a powerful router that's capable of traveling with you wherever you go, or that's even powerful enough to be stationary in your small home or office, look no further than Barrel. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you in another video.